to worship at First Church. Really glad that you're here. Uh, it's great to be together to worship the Lord after a, a very eventful week that so many of us have shared. I hope you were able to take part in the MX experience we had this week. And um, Leslie's going to come up and say something about it in just a little bit. But I do want to just lift up one announcement that's in the bulletin, and that is about the worship night. Um, our youth group is uh, going to be hosting Salt and Light Youth Ministry for worship night, and everybody's invited to join in that experience. Um, it's going to be outdoors, and we're going to have fellowship as well. And it's Wednesday, July the 12th, and it's at the home of Mike and Sue Stalfer, and their address is 41. 98 Edenville Road and if uh, you can help with that event like with the setup and the parking and preparing the dinner for the salt and light worship team um, contact uh, Colin if you would and uh, his email is there so I'm gonna ask Leslie to come up and share a little bit of, uh, about our this week um so MX was a great week. You're going to get to see that later on in the service. We have a video, and we, John had quite the task to try to take all that happened and put that into four and a half minutes. So it's a bit of a, it's like fast forward MX. Um, the other thing I wanted to lift up, hopefully you got the yellow card on the way in. MX week is over. I'm a little relieved. It was great, but it was long. Um, but that does not mean like we're stopping. So in the month of July, there are a whole list of things. If you would like to continue some of the things from MX, you can keep going. So if you look on it, if anyone is interested in a new members class, that's going to be offered on Sunday mornings. Pastor Steve is going to be doing another Bible study. Uh, there's a women's book group. If you'd like to just get together and read a really good book, and she talks, it's Christine Kane, and she does a lot of outreach in the world, and so she writes about that. We're having a marriage mini retreat, the Salt and Light Worship, and if you're also coming out of MX thinking, I really liked working with the clothing ministry or Hungry Hearts, any of those things, what we're asking is if you could fill this out and just put your name, a way to contact you, and then what you are interested in, that gives us a way to get you more information about what you're interested in. So thanks. Thank you, Leslie. Would you stand with me if you're able this morning for our call to worship? God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, Let us join together in prayer. Lord, we pray that you would give us your Holy Spirit to always know that you alone sustain, strengthen, and empower us, that we cannot exist without you, and enable us to boldly live according to your will through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Um, let's be seated once more <laughs> and prepare ourselves as we should have earlier for worship by listening to our prelude.
And if we're able, as we share our first hymn, Make Me a Captive Lord. Make me a captive Lord. of that hymn that we just sang. We're dependent on God for everything. Through Christ, our sufficiency is found. It's his favor, it's his grace on us that makes, it, makes us enough. It's for that reason that we can have peace. And that's that peace that uh, we have is a peace that we share. So I say to you, the peace of Christ be with you. And let's share that peace with one another. Stick into the thing.
Thanks, Katie. That was uh, the title of that song was I Was There to Hear Your Borning Crying. Um, Katie told me before that her, her dad sang that at her, her wedding. Um, and so kind of in honor of Father's Day and uh, her dad, she sang it for us this morning. And so let me just add uh, my own sentiment. Happy Father's Day to dads that are with us this morning and hope that you have a great day with your family. As uh, Leslie mentioned, uh, we have a video that we want to show you. We're going to show that to you uh, now uh, during uh, the children's message. Uh, Brianna isn't able to be with us. Uh, she and her family went down to be with her mother who's um, recuperating from a stroke. So keep the, the run shawls in your prayers. But now uh, we're going to watch this video, kind of a recap of some of the events that took place during our MX week.
your church We are the home on earth Build your kingdom here Let the darkness fear Show your mighty hand Heal our streets and land Set your church We had a wonderful week and had the opportunity um, not only of having fellowship with each other, um, but also of doing some good for others and, um, and knowing that uh, they were blessed by it. So um, hope you were able to share in some of that. Uh, thanks, John and Leslie, for putting that together, and we'll look forward to MX24. Um, let's express our gratitude uh, to the Lord this morning for all he's done for us as we come before him with the presentation of our tithes and our offerings.
give you, Lord, our tithes and our offerings this morning, knowing that uh, they are but a, a, a little bit of who we are and uh, what we have, but we know, Lord, that in your hands, uh, whatever we give to you is enough, and you can multiply our giving, our living, uh, for your purposes. So to receive these gifts, our tithes, our offerings, and receive ourselves as uh, our due act of worship before you. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you remain standing as we hear our scriptures read for us uh, this morning? Today's scripture comes from 2 Corinthians 12, 5b through 10. I will not boast about myself except about my weaknesses. Even if I should choose to boast, I would not be a fool because I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain so no one will think more of me than is warranted by what I do or say or because of these surpassingly great revelations. Therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, my great is sufficient for you, for my power is made in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses and in insults and in hardships and persecutions and difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. You may be seated. Thank you, Addie, for reading for us this morning. This is one of those passages in Scripture that um, has generated a lot of discussion, um, more out of curiosity than, than really than um, theological significance, I'd say. Um, when, when Paul talks about being given a thorn in the flesh from Satan, um, People have de talked about that and debated about that for a long time, but that's not really the point of this, this text. Uh, I think it's a, a way that we get waylaid, really. The, the point of the text has to do with Paul, his weaknesses, and Christ's sufficiency. And that's what I want us to think about in relationship to ourselves, that in our living... Um, 
we often feel like we are not enough. That was one of the themes of the MX week. Um, that we feel like we're not enough, but, we, but God makes us enough. Because Christ is enough. And Christ's grace in our life is enough. Um, more than we need. Sufficient for whatever it is that uh, we're facing. So I thought we'd think about that this morning and uh, out of this, this text, seeing some of the things that Paul had to say um, about his own weaknesses. And it's kind of interesting because one of the things that uh, Paul gets hammered on is some people think that Paul is, a, is kind of conceited or that he talks too much about himself or, or whatever. And I... I take a different view uh, of, from that. Uh, I don't think Paul's conceited. I think Paul is grateful. And uh, in so many places in the scripture where, where he comes across as being uh, maybe focused on himself or a little harsh or hard on other people, uh, I really believe that that comes out of his life, his desire for people to be all that they can be and, and the, for the church to be as strong as it can be in the way that they love each other and care for each other um, and do for each other. So let's look at this passage of scripture and I put an outline in the bulletin for you this morning to follow along. And the first thing that kind of sticks out uh, to my mind anyway in this text is um, that we might glean from what Paul is saying when he says, I will not boast about myself, that we might say uh, that, it, we, that we shouldn't, that don't boast about yourself, but instead recognize a weakness as places where God is working or could work. Now, the honest truth is I really don't know that many boastful Christians, I'm happy to say. I don't really know that many boastful Christians. Um, most of the Christians I know are, tend to be kind of humble people. Um, I've met a couple but, you know, most, most Christians I find to be pretty, you know, salt of the earth, uh, even keeled, not talking about themselves all the time kind of people, which is actually one of the great things about our witness in the world is that maybe um, the Christians uh, don't boast. I know we get, a, we get bad labels. We get some bad rap, um, as I said I don't know that many, but there, I've met a few, and I know there are some out there that kind of draw attention to themselves because um, an arrogant or proud Christian isn't a great witness. Um, and, but God calls us um, uh, in our life to be humble and to, and to not boast. And Paul says um, that he doesn't boast uh, about what he could boast about. And then, he goes on to, and then he goes on to say uh, that he wants to boast about his weaknesses. Now, I do know a lot of Christians who recognize their weaknesses and sometimes focus too much, I think, on their weaknesses and see their weaknesses as failures in their life and as, as barriers for service. You know, I could never get up and talk in front of a group of people. I could never witness to my faith. I could never, I'm too shy, I'm too backwards. I don't know the Bible well enough. There are all kinds of things that we can say that, we, that Christians might see as their weaknesses. And rather than seeing them as weaknesses, they, you know, they see them as, you know, blockages and don't see them as places where God might work because that's the way that Paul's talking about his weaknesses that we could think of our weaknesses as a place where God might work think how our lives would change if we saw our weak points as not as places where we're ashamed but as places where God is working in us and the way that Paul did. If, if we could really see that you know, some of our you know, shortcomings actually are places where God is at work and accept that, we would maybe 
you know, not feel so guilty about those areas. Recognizing that we're only human, and of course we're not, everybody isn't strong in every area, and, and we don't have to be ashamed if, if there's an area that we're a little weak in, though we, maybe we'd stop feeling guilty, guilty about that if we saw, well, that's an area where God's working on my life. Or maybe we would have more confidence in our faith, more confidence in our living that God was indeed using us through our weaknesses that, that we've seen in different places where maybe we didn't think we had the ability to do something because we see it as a weakness, and yet somehow God used us in that area, and that's happened. I know some of you experienced that. That if, if we thought of our weaknesses as places where God is working, then maybe we'd have more confidence that God is going to continue to work through our weaker points. And thirdly, you know, if we recognize that um, our weaknesses were places where God could work, we would focus on God's power in us maybe more than our own power, our own intellect, our own strength. We focus on what God is doing, that God could use us as a channel, as an instrument of his peace and work rather than just our trying to gin it up, make it happen. So that's one thing. Second thing is um, that we could let our words and deeds be our recommendation to others. That we don't have to, you know, I know one of the things that people do when they get a job, when they're hunting for a job, they write up, they write the resume and they try to write all their strengths, where their strengths are. We don't list our weaknesses for good reasons. But I know that sometimes in a job interview, an interviewer might ask a, a candidate, well, what are your, what's your weakest point? What's your weakness? Which is kind of an intimidating kind of question. And you think you maybe kind of have to fudge there. But what if we let our words and our deeds be our recommendation to others? You know, reputations are built on consistency. Reputations are built upon people's consistent actions and people's consistent kindness. People don't remember what we say as much as what we do. Um, in church, you know, our actions on behalf of the gospel and on behalf of people are the things that really give us credibility. And a church that has credibility in its community is a church that has done something for the community whose actions are seen. A church that has credibility in the community is a church where the words that flow out are words of grace and love rather than judgment and hard, hardness. Our words of grace and kindness are what linger in people's minds and inspire them. Our deeds of love and lifting people's lives up are what cause people to be inspired, to think that God cares about them and might want to work in their life. That is the nature of what it means to be a witness. Words and deeds that we give do that point to Christ. And the third thing that seems to come out of what Paul is saying here in this passage from his second letter to the Corinthians is that we need to recognize that there are unexpected purposes in our limitations. Now that's really the, the counterintuitive kind of thing. That it's in our limitations that there is a purpose. Because most people think that their weaknesses or limitations are things they have to make up for, rather than thinking that those limitations actually have a reason or a cause or something useful. Paul's thorn in the flesh, as I said, which people have tried to figure out for millennia, had a purpose. Uh, rather than only seeing how that impediment may have limited Paul, Paul recognized in the limitation that there was a reason, there was something useful, that he not become conceited, he says. It was given to me so they not become conceited, that he stayed humble. 
That's, you know, that's a pretty uh, large self-awareness, large is the word, but deep self-awareness that Paul had to recognize that this limitation was doing something positive in his life. It was keeping him from becoming um, conceited. All that Paul did, all that Paul accomplished through Christ's presence working through him could easily have made him conceited and arrogant uh, in himself rather, um, rather than humble. You know, and, and what Paul's focus was, was to be forthright in his teaching, to be honest, um, and, and even with sharing his own limitations and to minister to people um, out, of his, out of what God did through him. Our limitations, your, yours and my weaknesses, can have an unexpected purpose in our life. If we accept them, acknowledge them, and ask God to show us what purposeful use even our weakness might be um, to him, for him to show us how it could become useful for the kingdom. I know that sounds odd and against the way we usually think, but God's ways are higher than ours. And um, there are the testimonies of many people who, out of their weakness, have seen God do amazing things. The fourth thing is um, this idea that we can pray for changes in our life, but we, in our areas of weakness, but we should accept God's timing in the answering or not answering any particular prayer. So, though the purpose of the thorn in the flesh was clear to Paul, he still prayed that it might be taken away from him. Um, and undoubtedly, he prayed for that to be removed so that he could do more for Christ and the gospel. But one of the things we want to notice is that he prayed for this three times. You know, and you, when you might think, well, he was constantly praying that God would take it away. But he said he prayed about it three times. He wasn't constantly asking you just ask three times. Now, I'm not saying that three times is the limit for you and for me to ask God to do something for us or to do something for someone else. I'm not saying that. But it's just that Paul accepted that for himself, uh, he realized this thorn in the flesh had a purpose, and he accepted that reason and embraced it and allowed it to do its work in him. Now, our weaknesses, um, you know, if there's, and, and, and weaknesses are of varying nature, okay, so not everything is the same, but, um, and some things can work for us. We can, but to pray and ask God to change it, but then to be, have the understanding that sometimes God's purposes are not ours or greater than ours, and it will allow God's purpose to be born in us and to, to work through us. Um, so when we ask God to help us with our weakness or to heal us from something that we might feel is holding us back, maybe we should also ask God to show us if there's a way that this limitation can make a difference for good in our witness for Christ. The greatest purpose of our weaknesses would be our discovery that God's grace through Christ is more than enough for us. And that his power is made perfect or is seen most clearly when, when we're too weak to do it, but he does it through us. The fifth thing that I'd say out of this text is that we need to focus on Christ's presence rather than our insufficiencies. What made the difference for Paul? It was that Christ was with him. Christ's power was was in his life. Uh, Paul came to the place of boasting about his weaknesses so that, he says, so that Christ's power might rest on me. Uh, and you might think of boasting here as um, holding a higher value over, uh, with weakness rather than his own abilities. He valued more 
the weaknesses in his life through which God was working than his own abilities. Because we see God's power work through us most clearly when we are out of our depth. You know, we should, we should you've heard that saying, you know, uh, reach for something beyond your ability to grasp. And when we do that and God comes through, we recognize that God has done it. And that's why Paul boasted in his weaknesses, because in those moments, it was evident that God was working in his life. We need to work beyond our reach for Christ. You know, what, what holds um, churches back? Uh, Adoniram Judson used to say, uh, attempt great things for God and expect great things from God. Basically, he's saying, do more than you think you can do. What holds churches back is when they say, we can only do this. And the operative word there is, we can. And they forget that the scripture says, with God, nothing is impossible. You can do all things through Christ. And so as individuals and as a church, we want to strive beyond what we know we can grasp ourselves. Because that's really where faith and trust come to play in in our life. When we do that, Paul says, Christ's power rests on us, moves through us. And we see it most clearly. And the last thing, The sixth thing is to remember that Christ's grace and favor makes you enough. Paul's summation of this section of his writing can be our testimony too. He says, that is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Sounds like an oxymoron, doesn't it? Two incompatible thoughts. When I'm weak, then I'm strong. Well, that makes no sense. But as I said a little bit ago, a little bit ago, with God all things are possible. And in God's um, working in us, those things are true. That when we are weak and trusting in Christ, and leaning on Christ, then we're strong. When we don't rest upon our own abilities, our own sufficiency, but reach out in a way that requires God to do it through us, then we see strength working through us. It is Christ in us by his grace and favor, that we are more than enough to meet the challenges of our faith and our daily living. I don't know what it is that you're facing. Maybe there's something one of us here this morning or many of us this morning are facing that we just feel like I, that it's a, a bridge too far or it's a mountain too high. I don't know if I can surmount that. Well, you can't, you know. And sometimes that's a really great thing to acknowledge. Our success will come when we realize that we are not able to do it ourselves. God has to help us. And what a wonderful thing to come to that place and to trust God to help and to see him come through. It's glorious. It is Christ in us with his grace and his favor that we are more than enough to meet the challenges of our faith and to do it with joy and delight the way that Paul said he delighted in those things which seem ridiculous to be delighted in. And yet he delighted in them because he knew that God was going to come through and show, be, be shown to those around him through, through the miraculous power of Christ working in his life. I pray that we will know that Christ is in us that very same way and in the life of our church for his glory. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we have lots of weaknesses. We have places that we are out of our depth. 
Lord, help us not to be afraid in those times. Lord, help us to realize that in those times, you are more than able to meet the need and that those can be miraculous times of witness. Lord, help us to um, be willing to be bold enough to dare, to reach beyond the length of a grasp to what you want to do in us, in the life of our church, in our community, so that we can have testimony and witness to your power working within us. We pray this in Christ's name and for his sake. Amen. Let's stand together as we sing our closing hymn, Lead On, O King Eternal. So as uh, we go into the week before us, as we leave this place of worship, let us leave um, challenged by this idea. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. Go forth and may the power of Christ rest upon you in all that you do and everywhere you go. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.